Hazmat isn't a terrible thing. It's just the chemical byproduct. It's just what's left over after some elements got together and they had to spin something off. Our body has to get rid of it. When it doesn't get rid of it, that's when the lactic acid's bad. So, as muscle builds up with lactic acid, we experience fatigue. But that's where our circulatory system comes in. When muscles want to quit working, it's because they don't have enough energy and they can't absorb any more good stuff, any more oxygen, any more glucose from our blood because they're saturated with this byproduct. That's why training is important because when you train for something, you improve how your, your systems work. So in this, you can train and improve yourself anaerobically by improving how your body removes waste. Because we're not worried about oxygen in this one because we're working anaerobically. So the important part of this is teaching your body to remove the waste so it has room to perform. Carbohydrates only. We're still anaerobic, so only carbohydrates. Now what's happening here? Glucose or glycogen, remember, is broken down when we eat it or it's removed from storage. Undergoes glycolysis. There's these ATP pops off and there's pyruvic acid that's left over. Now if there's not oxygen present, that pyruvic acid becomes lactic acid and it's released into the food. Or, sorry, I can't read my own slide. Released into the blood. Then we exhale it. The difference between anaerobic and aerobic glycolysis is what happens to this pyruvic acid. Aerobic glycolysis, it's the same series of reactions, like I said, same series of reactions as anaerobic glycolysis, breaking down glucose and glycogen to get ATP. The difference is the pyruvic acid is converted into a substance called acetyl-CoA instead of lactic acid. So because that pyruvic acid is converted to something else, there is no lactic acid. The acetyl-CoA is able to go into an ATP producing assembly line called the Krebs cycle. Energy, energy, tons of ATP is made within the Krebs cycle and by going into the Krebs cycle, we're able to bring in other energy systems to produce even more ATP. So, same system, same reactions are happening in glycolysis, anaerobic or aerobic, it's the byproduct, pyruvic acid. After the ATPs break off, the pyruvic acid is anaerobically converted to lactic acid, heads out to the blood, or aerobically converted to acetyl-CoA and goes into the Krebs cycle. Now, mitochondria, I've said that a million times already. Mitochondria, if you're seventh grade science, when you did that model, the jelly bean looking thing in there, the big thing you can always point out when you had to tell what the different parts of the cell were, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. It's referred to as the powerhouse of the cell because it is saturated with ATP. Another pretty cool thing is you can increase the number of mitochondria within a cell through fitness. So the greater the production of aerobic energy, I'm sorry, the greater the number of mitochondria, you get more, you get more energy out of each cell. The more fit you are, the more mitochondria you have to produce all of this energy. So the, the better you improve your cardiovascular system, the more cells you have with multiple, with multiple mitochondria in there. And you can see how it snowballs into someone having good fitness 
and how quickly you can progress from bad fitness to good fitness. All right, back to aerobic glycolysis real quick. So what happens when you don't have enough oxygen, all your body does is switch over to anaerobic glycolysis. So those pyruvic acids, instead of acetyl-CoA, they go to lactic acids. It's kind of a no-brainer. But it's an easy switch. It just depends on if oxygen is available for the ATP to split off or when the ATP splits off and that pyruvic acid is able to convert to acetyl-CoA. All right, the Krebs cycle. I'm gonna, I always do this because in college we had to just fill in this blank. We just had to draw the Krebs cycle. And it looks like that. You guys will have access. This isn't in your book. But we had to draw every single one of those things. So just be thankful you don't have to know it, but just know how amazing this Krebs cycle is. It is a complex series of chemical reactions. One thing spins off, another thing hops on this compound, and then because something else hops on, then it's able to split into two different compounds, and so on and so forth, to yield ATP. Because of all of these other reactions, then there's some other enzymes that are made, just like the, what happened with the pyruvic acid, that when oxygen was present, it was able to become acetyl-CoA, which that in, is an enzyme in itself that's needed in the Krebs cycle. During the Krebs cycle, there's some enzymes that enable the electron transport chain to happen. And that is where you really get in to some ATPs being released. So you can see how valuable this aerobic system is and oxygen being a part of um, ATP breakdown. But you can also probably understand now why it takes so long to kick in and why we can't rely on it for everything all the time. All right, I said electron transport chain. What the electron transport chain it's a reaction between an electron donor and an electron receptor. In this case, we're talking about oxygen and we're talking about transferring H2, um, hydrogen ions. Now, I got ahead of myself because I get to talk about sweat. But these positive hydrogen ions, they're used to produce this ATP as it moves across a membrane of the cell. Now, each time we go through the electron transport chain, 32 ATPs are released. This is, can keep happening and keep happening as long as the Krebs cycle continues to happen, as long as oxygen is present, as long as aerobic glycolysis happens and acetyl-CoA is available, the Krebs cycle can happen, which means the electron transport chain can happen. And as long as those keep happening, your body will have continuous mass amounts of energy to rely on. Beta oxidation is how our body metabolizes fat. Now, fat is a calorically dense, ATP dense storage unit, but it's also really, really hard to break down. So, it doesn't, we can't do high intensity work and burn, burn fat all the time, but our body can burn fat when we give it a chance to burn it. So that's why all of these other systems need to work the way they do so that beta oxidation can keep up its end of the bargain. Now, the Krebs cycle, the electron transport chain, chain they can metabolize fat as an energy source because oxygen is present. Now, the fat that they use, it's stored as triglycerides in our body. It's got to be broken down into a glycerol and a free fatty acid through a process called lipo lipolysis. Those free fatty acids enter what we call beta oxidation, 
and that is then reduced to acetyl-CoA and hydrogen. We've got, another, we've got an extra hydrogen now. We had one in the electron transport chain. We're talking about H2O, and I think we all know that's water, and that is sweat. This is a fabulous complex graph of all of the, or sketch of all of those things that are happening. Glucose that undergoes glycolysis with ATP, and then it's pyruvate, which then becomes acetyl-CoA. Spins off this NADH, NADH there, NADH, that's needed in the electron transport chain. This guy just keeps going as long as it's fed with acetyl-CoA. A byproduct of the Krebs cycle is CO2, carbon dioxide, <sighs> what we blow out. Off of here, electron transport chain, more ATPs. We've got this oxygen that has to be there for that to happen, and we get H2O as a byproduct of the electron transport chain. So if you're sweating a lot, you can just tell people you're improving your electron transport chain. It sounds really cool or, or, or silly. All right, that was how we use our energy system.